Hey everybody, that sea monster here, and who the heck is Shade the Changing Girl? Well, to understand Shade, we need to first look at Rock Shade, or Shade the Changing Man. Rock Shade, not to be confused with the 1940s flash villain The Shade, was created by Steve Ditko in the late 70s, a secret agent and fugitive from the Metazone. Shade fled his home dimension and went to Earth, where he tried to clear his name after being framed for treason, but not before stealing a powerful item called the M-Vest, known in Shade the Changing Girl as the Madness Vest, which allowed allows Rock to manifest illusions around himself. During his time on Earth, he comes close to proving his innocence until he finds himself drawn into the area of madness to save his wife, the leader of a meta base on Earth called the Occult Research Center. After escaping, he officially becomes the only being to have ever escaped the area of madness, alive and sane. After he saves her, he attempts, one last time, to prove his innocence to the Meta government. But unable to do so, he finds himself trapped and allows himself, once again, to be consumed by the area of madness once and for all. So this is Shade's first story within the DC Universe, and apart from a quick appearance with the Suicide Squad, we really don't hear too much else from poor Rock Shade until the early 90s, when DC attempts to revive Shade and pull it in alongside other fringe or artsy-esque titles like Constantine, Sandman, and Animal Man. In this version, we see Rockshade as an artist, a poet, a little bit more like the quirky creative writing teacher or that one kid in high school that could play guitar and was super into tie-dye and a little bit obsessed with being born in the wrong era. Then the rogue fugitive on the run from the militant interdimensional government that was his original incarnation. The psychedelic colors, poetic dialogue and style, and controversial political plots made this shade stand out against the rest of the DC lineup, which really tended towards either being superhuman and fantastical or super gritty, sometimes both. Uh, something else interesting about this shade is that each time they are killed, they come back in a different form. Their first incarnation being a red-headed man, the second a ever-changing woman, the third a lunatic, the fourth a uh, very apathetic, and his last form, at least in this version, uh, the obsessive. And each of these forms creates a new personality, a new arc, a new way of experiencing the world. In fact, one of the more interesting or controversial plots was Shade actually reflecting on their past sexual experiences, both as a man and as a woman. Likewise, this constant change in appearance and lives pulls in new, fascinating, and very interesting socio-political dialogues. Before DC Rebirth and the Young Animals launch, we actually get to see Shade again, as written by Jeff Johns in Flashpoint Secret 7 and once more in Justice League Dark. Today, in DC Rebirth and Young Animals, we find Shade back in the meta dimension as a young avian, searching for adventure and dying to experience the madness and poetry of Earth. But is this really the shade from New 52 and the 90s? Well, that remains a little bit unclear. This shade seems to have no memory of visiting Earth and regards the previous rock shade as an idol, a supreme poet, a figure that she desires to live up to and to emulate though she does adopt Shade's nickname along with the body of a near-dead teen, and though she also winds up stealing the M-Vest or the Madness Vest, we are unsure if she really is Rock Shade Incarnate or if she is a being that is entirely new. 
So how did you feel about Shade the Changing Girl? How do you feel that the young animal shade ties into the shade of days past? How do you feel about shady bitches in general? Let me know in the comments below and have an amazing day.